Welcome to Heart and Soul. My guest today is the Teddy Bear of Comedy. <laughs> Teddy Bear of Comedy. What is, what That's is it? right. This James is Teddy Bear. James Irvin Berry. Berry. The yes. Teddy Bear. Welcome to Heart and Soul. Thank you very so much for having me. You. you know, the first time I saw you was at an event. Yes. It was a church event. Yes. And I said, this man is going to bomb. I don't know what kind of comedy he's going to be doing because this is a church group. Wow, right the confidence. Was, I didn't. I said, he's going to bomb. He's he going to offend some people up in here. Yeah. And uh, you did. And they was laughing at the jokes you was doing yes, about were. church folks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. They loved you. Yeah, it they, was They great. stand up and clap, you know, you know, for your jokes. How did you, how do you know how to gear your comedy towards different groups and what is a comic? What is a comic? What is a comic? That's so debatable even amongst comics. Like, um, it depends on how semantic the, the actual person doing the jokes is. Some, some guys would say there's a difference between being a comedian and a comic. Okay. Um, I don't look at it that way. I just kind of look at it like a comic is a person who's basically job it is to be funny. To be funny. Uh, <laughs> like, like your, your, just be funny. Your job is to be funny. That's yeah, so uh, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, please, don't. not everybody cheer at the same time. Uh, you'd be surprised to find how many people, at least within the past 10 years, didn't even know that it was black people in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like, I would get that all the time. Oh, oh, oh there's black people in Milwaukee? Are you you got to be kidding. I'm like, yeah, like we got an NBA team in Milwaukee. There's at least 12 black people in Milwaukee at any given time, okay? We call it the Milwaukee Bucks, by the way. 24 of you include the spouses, all right? 124 of you include all the kids, you know what I'm saying? Like they for real with it. Uh, the only thing I don't like about being a Milwaukee resident is how cold it gets. Um, me personally, I'm more a summer person, winter, not my thing, man. The reaction during winter time is what cracks me up, especially in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Other people in other parts of the country don't experience the kind of temperatures that we experience, right? We, it was so cold in Milwaukee one year, the police chief had the nerve to get on the air bragging, talking about, we've had the lowest crime rate in the history of Milwaukee, Wisconsin this past winter. I'm like, oh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I don't have enough hatred in my heart to do a drive-by in 60 below weather. I would not look tough wearing earmuffs, okay? You know how hard it is to pull a trigger on the pistol wearing mittens? When did you know you were funny? What, what age did you know, you know, I'm funny. People think I'm funny. When did people start laughing at you? Usually people say they started when they was in grade school. When did you start? Two. At two years old, you was making people laugh. I've been making, this is the thing. I've been making people laugh my entire life, mm -hmm. but it has, it has never been intentional. The di and that's, to me, that's one of the differences between somebody at your job that's, that's quick with it, but they can't walk on stage and make people laugh. Right. You know, somebody who, like in your family, is really funny, but they can't get paid for that type of funny all the time. With me, it was never, it was never, I'm trying to make my mom laugh, I'm trying to make my cousins laugh. It was, that was never the intent. We was all just having a good time, and I just happened to be the person that, that was, you know, generating the most of my laughs. Um, and as a kid, I guess it was, you know, mischievous. I was like, mischievous. Yeah, I was, I was that one. And so, um, so to get out of trouble, it was easier for me, you know, to get out of trouble. To joke your way out. Either joke my way, way out of it. My, I, was, I was not the funny guy in my classes. You know, uh, in school, I was never, I was never the class clown. I was, I was not any of that. But around my church friends and around my family, when we got together, I, I was just naturally, I would have them roll. The thing that cracks me up about being uh, from Milwaukee, especially as it relates to the weather, is how we end up with sports injuries because of our weather. Like it's not uncommon to hear somebody say that they got a torn rotator cuff, and you assuming that it's from baseball. No. What had happened was they were shoveling the snow and hit uneven pieces of their concrete in front of their house. Boom! Torn rotator cuff. That's how you get a serious sport. Now, we all play it off the same way. I mean, you know, you got to act as injured as possible. You got to make sure everybody see you taking your pills and stuff so people can ask you what's wrong. Then you can say, I got injured, right? When you doing sports, you get injured. When you shoveling outside your uh, your house and you accidentally hit uneven concrete, we gonna make it seem like a sports injury, but it's really not. 
Uh, the thing that cracks me up about my family, though, because I was born and raised in Milwaukee, so the thing that cracks me up about my family, we are like the typical Midwestern family. You know, like my mom, I don't know how many people I've had a mom that tried to guilt them into eating their food by telling them about starving kids in Africa. But I had that kind of mom. We call that the Midwestern guilt trip. Uh, <laughs> my, mom, my mom was good with that guilt stuff too. Hey, 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 eat all of that food. Don't you know there are starving kids in Africa? Because apparently Africa is that way. <laughs> She's like, and they are too frail to walk a flight of steps uh, uh, uh. That's the part that got me right there. Uh, uh, uh. Thinking steps. I thought they lived in huts. All right? I've never seen a four-story African hut. I think it'd be funny if African moms are over there going, hey, 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 stop eating all of that food. Don't you know there are obese kids in America that are too fat to walk a flight of steps? Uh, uh, uh. So how old were you uh, the first time you were on stage? To do stand-up comedy. To do stand-up comedy. And you felt that you were a comic and this was your calling. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> 12 years ago. And you were how old? I, don't know, I, I gotta tell my age. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, you have to tell your age. You know, what women don't tell yeah. their age. So I guess men, it's okay for you Two, not to tell your age. It was, it was, uh, it was 2000 and, uh, actually, no, it wasn't 12 years ago. It was 10 years ago. It was 2006 is when. Because I, I had been through a lot with stand-up comedy. I had mm -hmm. quit like two or three times. And um, that particular, um, it was April of 2006, as a matter of fact, um, is when I is when I knew because that was that was when I decided that I was never quitting stand up comedy. Okay. And so I rem I remember that show. I remember who was on it, where it was, the whole thing. Now, what is the life of a comic? Because I know that you travel a lot. You have to travel a lot because yeah. you were supposed to come on my radio show mm -hmm. and you couldn't come because you were going to do a cruise. You yeah. were a comedian on a cruise. And yeah. I said, wow, <laughs> yeah. what a gig yes. to be a comedian on a, on a cruise. You're traveling all over. How many places have you been? Where oh, have you man. been? How was that experience um, being on a cruise? It's, um, and entertaining people, was it nightly, daily? It was, yeah, it was 15 shows a week. Yeah. How many times a day? Um, three shows a night. Really? Yeah, on, on average. Some show, some nights it might be, you know, one show, but then we have to go be like the judges for something else, like the guest judges for something else. Okay. But the, but the standard on that particular ship was about, it was about three shows a night. About 15, wow. Closer to 15 shows a week. Uh, you travel a lot. You're on the road a lot. Mm -hmm. What is that like being on the road and mm -hmm. you do maybe, I don't know, is it one week, one place, yeah. uh, one the, week, another place, and you're basically traveling a lot. Now, how has that had an impact on your life? Because does it get lonesome on the road or do you travel <laughs> with other people? I can definitely say I'm a loner by nature. Mm -hmm. um, I consider myself to be an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, so I'm extremely introverted. Uh, introverted, like comics are people who, like, let's say when we go out of town, we, I'm just as fine being cooped up in my house, let's say, for three months straight and never coming out unless I have to. Whether or not it gets lonely, um, if you like your space, you just fine. Okay. You know, if you type a person like the space, it, it works for you. Um, I travel with other comics whenever I can. Like, um, at this point, at this stage in the game. I've moved up to pretty much headline in most comedy clubs that I go to. Okay. And so one of the perks is you get the, you know, you can request a comic mm -hmm. to open for you, mm -hmm. let's say. And so a lot of times um, I'll request who I want that I know works well with me. And then that way I can travel with them and then we can just do the gig together. Now, um, what do you do when you have a heckler? Because um, when I've gone to comedy shows and there's been lots of people, there, lots of people, and the comedian is uh, saying something, and the, I don't know what it is, the audience participation part all through the show, <laughs> you got somebody that's been drinking, and they want to participate, and they're yelling out stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're not funny, they're yelling out stuff. If you are funny, they're yelling <laughs> out stuff. They're just giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. What, how do you handle that if you get a heckler? You're doing your act, and I'm going to be a heckler. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's where everybody drink all the time, isn't it? Yeah, everybody drinks everywhere all the time, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> but y'all drink beer. Everybody drinks beer. <laughs> okay, so you so basically you're trying to shut that person yeah. down. Well, my parents, they, they just celebrating 37 years together. 37 years. Uh, please clap, because they, they're not clapping about it at all. Um, 37 years of marital blisters. Oh, my God. My, they're totally opposite people by nature. My mom is like Mother Teresa. My dad is like Shaft. Like, <laughs> I don't understand how they've been together this long. I'm sti- I am still trying to figure it out, man. My dad is super old school. As my sister would say, daddy is country. My dad is like one of them like, old school southern people. He's from uh, Holly Springs, Mississippi. So he's one of them southern guys. When he's talking to you, he'll make up a word and expect you to know what he's talking about. Or... He'll use a word completely out of context. He still refers to it as the specific ocean. Yeah, I can't wait to visit the specific ocean. I'm like, okay. If you can find it on Google Maps, I will drive you there myself. All right. He'll start off a sentence, you know, according to my perspective, <laughs> like, Daddy, I think you left your perspective at the specific ocean. He told us this lady at his church was playing the tangerine. Like, oh, yeah, Sister Cynthia can play that tangerine. Yeah, she can play it. Like they was having citrus Sundays at his church or something. He is, uh, he is super hilarious. We used to always try to correct my dad and, like, tell him what the proper word was until we actually realized it's funnier to let him think he's right. And that's why we love holidays at my parents' house because my dad always comes through. One time we were over there for Thanksgiving at my parents' house and my dad walks in. He's like, oh, guess who done bought another gas station in the inner city? Them uraniums. He was like, oh, really? The uraniums is buying. So, All right now. Okay, we'll wait till the plutoniums move in. Okay? They be running around acting like borons, you know what I'm saying? Getting selenium everywhere. <laughs> can't, can't even get that up with iodine, you know? Like, whatever. 